The Stewarts. This War Without an Enemy by Mike Walker. The Story of Charles I. My Lord Strafford. Majesty, how may I serve you? You are... Parliament has said you are to be arrested and charged. It's nonsense, all of it. There is no evidence. You will see them off, Strafford. Just, just a moment's inconvenience. And I will stand firm. They shall not harm you, I swear. Do not On a king's swear. word, I swear it. I fear, Majesty, that even a king's word may not be good enough in this world turned upside down. Thomas. Sir? I will get up now. There's a lot to do this morning. Water's warm, sir. How did you know when I'd wake? I've been keeping it warm. I didn't think you'd sleep so long. I slept well. Isn't that strange? On the day I'm going to die, I slept well. I... I wish... Go on. I wish it was not to be. You fought against your king, Thomas. I? And now I know the man. There's the pity. How, the... sir? Oh, the man was not the king, and the king was not the man. I could probably bottle that and sell it as a holy relic in days to come. <laughs> ah, but then you'd have to pay a license to the Stuart family, my friend. You'd not want to finance the return of the king. You believe there'll be a return? I believe I'd better get dressed now, Thomas. The bishop will be here soon, and he hates to be kept waiting. Oh, it's cold. Aye, a cold day. Two shirts, then. Don't want them to think I'm shaking from fear. Is it that important, sir? You know, my friend, you are my friend, though you are my enemy, too. The king's enemy. I have been thinking most of the time the things we do in this world. They don't matter beyond tonight, perhaps next week. The kings and ministers, yes, a year or a decade or two or three. Perhaps even for a reign or two. But I belong to history now in a way I never did before. Perhaps we all do. Now? So you see, Thomas, I must be careful what I say, I suppose. You can trust me, sir. I think I can. And <laughs> and for all I am who I am, for all history and the centuries and the bishop and eternity, sometimes, Thomas, I just feel shit scared. And frankly, sir, I don't blame you. If it were me, I'd have taken up long-term residence in the Jakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, recently I've made my motto, whilst I breathe, I live. Maybe it should be, whilst I laugh, I live. <laughs> Come on. He doesn't like to be kept waiting. The bishop? The headsman. You ready, sir? Is there anything that I have to do? Sir? That will... It's... You, you see, you walk 
between the guards. I, I'll be a step ahead with the, the bishop there and your man. They walk behind you. They, they have to stay. You don't think rescue it isn't going to happen, Colonel? Just make it as easy as we can. We just want to get it done. Uh, no trouble. Well, See? then let's get it done. Thomas? Bishop? Do you care to take a short walk with your king? You're not supposed to king. You're, you're not to use the word, the title. What are they going to do if I insist, Colonel? Cut off my head. Is it all right? It looks a bit fake to me. It is fake, dimwit, just like yours. Yeah, but mine looks better. Look, it's a fake bloody beard, so no one recognises us, right? So why did you ask me if it was all right, then? Um, well, I mean, do you know who I am? Of course I know who you are. You're the headsman. Everyone knows who you are. I mean, there's no point in being the bloody chief headsman if nobody... I mean knows. them. The crowd, will they know? Them? Who cares what they know? This ain't about them, Jack. This was never about them, was it? Heads up. Here they come. Heads off. There they go. I suppose <laughs> I may speak to the crowd, Colonel. Uh, we have a, a schedule, sir, but... Um, if... All the world knows that I never began oh, the word! war with Parliament. Always and at every turn. Sir, we must get on. I have a good cause. I have a gracious God. I will say no more. Hetzman, if you will. I thank you, sir. If I may tell you what... Um... Yes, yes, you'd better. I've never done this before. Uh, you... If, uh, if you put your hair up under the cap, sir, so I... Do you see the neck and kneel and um, <clears throat> you lay the head across the block. If you need, we can, my assistant can secure the ropes. I don't think so. Because you don't want to be moving, you, you really don't, because then... I'll do my job. You do yours. One stroke... Yes. You're sure now? It's my job. Block's a bit low. It's the way they make them, sir. Is my hair? It's all right, sir. I'll say a short prayer, and then I'll put my hands, my arms out like this, Stretch them out. Like that. I see that. That's the way to do it, sir. Like that. When you... When I do that. So much to see. The grain. The grain of the wood, so clear, so beautiful. I never saw that before. I did, my lord. Strafford. Here is where I died. It can't be. And this world turned upside down. Anything can be, my lord. Even a king's head on the block. I had it, Strafford. I had it, and I lost it, somehow. But I can't see where. It went through my fingers, like water or fairy gold. Help me, as you always did. And as the world is turned upside down, so we must look back to last first. Hurst Castle, a year ago, a defeated king captured, waiting upon his enemy's will. Put it here, John. No, no, it's better over there. The painting, the big painting. Get rid of it. They didn't do this for me, Colonel. You're a prisoner, sir. Why would they? Then who is coming to see the prisoner? Someone important? That's not for me to say. I'm a soldier. I do what I'm told. Like the centurion? That's it. 
Like the Centurion. Who is Caesar, Colonel? You'll find out. On a good time. Am I not to have my walk? The day is fine. I am allowed some air, surely. Wait here. Sit there. Do not try to leave the room without permission. Finish here. Now! Get it done! Mr. Cromwell, I believe. Good day, Mr. Stewart. I would ask you to sit, but the chairs are not mine, nor the house, nor it seems the country anymore. Shall we both sit, or would you rather walk? It's a fine day. Oh, my very own words. You should be careful, Mr. Cromwell. Should I? You might pick up bad habits in my company. Shall we? Lord has given us a beautiful day. Every day the Lord giveth his beautiful if it is passed in his service. But sun is better than rain. Not to the flower that needs to drink, nor to the river that is dried to mud. You were not so biblical last time we met, I believe. We grow in our understanding. Of what? The situation? Of God's plan for us. If you'll forgive me, Mr. Cromwell, I'm rather more interested in Parliament's plan for this kingdom. Commonwealth. May we agree to disagree? No, we may not. It is not my will, but his. Ah, no negotiations, then, with the Lord. No intercessions. No intercessors. I... I believe they call you Old Ironsides. I can see why. Oh, Mr. Stewart, I don't think you can. You're impervious to argument. As I recall, that was not the case between us last year. I believe we came to certain agreement as to the heads of the argument that would allow us to come... You see, allow that word. Yes. You cannot allow a king. I think your father knew better. And your grandmother knew worse. Oh. <laughs> Did old Ironsides jest? I have been known to smile, Mr. Stewart. You should try it more often. You see, you do not understand at all. Then this time I say, tell me. Of God's grace abounding to the chief of sinners. God's mercy. Grace, not mercy. There is no mercy. For mercy means God changes his mind, and God, Mr. Stewart, does not change his mind. We are never to think he is a God of mercy, for he is a God of wrath. So you can send your man, Pride, into Parliament to throw down all those who do not agree with you, Mr. Cromwell, is that it? I wish then in that case I had been justified also, for when I tried it, all hell was let loose. You acted as a man, I acted as God's hand. That is a very big claim. Nevertheless, it is so. By his design are all things brought about for his ends. All of this was God's plan? This war without an enemy? <laughs> I'm sorry. You've got me speaking in capitals, too. But you know all this perfectly well, don't you? So it was never about the tyranny of, of, of Charles the King. Not about ship money or foreign wars or because of bishops and mercy or for the levellers, for democracy and some kind of freedom. It was simply because everything has been decided since the beginning of time. What is more important or simple than that? And if it isn't, then why are we here? Why are you here? To offer you one last chance. You can't see it, can you? I see perfectly well what is clear before me. So your God is the author of all things, creator of a universe that runs like a watch, a clockwork universe. A cruel, implacable, yes, merciless force that cares not a jot more about man than about... 
Any one of a hundred million mussels being torn apart by seabirds on the shore. I will not live in a world without mercy, Mr. Cromwell. I hope it for myself. I cannot deny it to others. Do you not see that the bishops are our direct line to Christ, anointed through the generations, back to the apostles? That is your answer? Yes. Shall we go back to the house? It's a prison. Matthew 21. Well? Render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. My dad had that translated for everyone. Princes rule under God, Mr. Stewart, not with him. And if they claim any part of his authority, then we must no longer obey them, but cast them down. How do you live, Mr. Cromwell, in that world of yours? Longer than you, I think, Mr. Stewart. Longer than you. Is he raising the axe even now? It's what he does. I saw him, Strafford. I saw him test the edge with his thumb. Did I still have a choice that day at Hurst? Or had it been decided before that? Go back, then. To... A cold season. Cold to the bone. Oxford. When your armies had been defeated in the field, but you... I thought to... risk all to win all. Your Majesty, forgive me, I was praying. We need all the prayers we can get. But it's not your priestly skills I need tonight. Can I pour you wine? Michael, they tell me you were a scout, a ranger for our forces. That you can move secretly and that if necessary you can ensure that secrecy. I would rather not, but I can. More important, that you get me to London? I think I will pour wine. London is Parliament. It won't be long before Oxford is theirs too. I'm losing this war, Michael. If I sit still, they'll take me within days. If I run for the coast and a boat, then what kind of a king have I been? To desert my people at the worst of times. I hear they're deserting you, sir. Like rats, some say, when the granary is empty. You plan to give yourself up to them? I plan to talk to them, negotiate. With all respect, sir, isn't it a bit late for talking? I, I don't believe that. My father always used to say, in the end, it always comes down to talking. They're rebels. But in the end, they will talk to the king. I can do this. I know I can, Michael. And I am the only man who can, because I believe, as God chose me to rule, so he will be with me now. If you can get me face to face with Skippen or Fairfax... I can convince them that none of us want this destruction, this waste to go on. But they might want someone to pay for it. We're in rebel territory. From now on, you're Harry and I'm Sir. Can you do that? I was once counted a good actor. I write to her every day, sometimes twice, sometimes three times. The Queen? My Maria. She. Do you see, Michael, there are so few the King can talk to. I was always surrounded by this wall, this armor of protocol. Manners. Politesse, ritual and regime. 
How I dressed, how I ate. Even at the stool. I actually had a chevalier at the shit house. I was never so much a man, even in part, and always a king in everything. But I could talk to her, to the children. I sometimes think this whole rebellion has been a process of stripping away from the king the layers of majesty and revealing what, who, in the end, this man. Hurry, attend to your business, trooper. Hold hard there, brother. Good day, brother. How goes it with you? It goes how it goes, brother. A uh, fine day, then. Got a name there, brother. Hudson. Michael Hudson. Where are you going, Michael Hudson, on this fine day? Uh, London. Yes, we go to London. Your business there. But they say there are righteous words to be heard, brother. God's good words to all men. There's God's word and God's word. All depends on how you hear it. Oh, brother, I can... Enough. You. Mm -hmm. Over here. But my servant, he... Last place you worshipped, eh? Where was it? He's just a simple fellow. All I want's a simple answer. Oh, it... we're a proper place, brother. Bishops and all. You reckon there's a badger be a bishop, brother? Because it was this very lane way or two back. A white don't need stone to pray, nor bishops neither. So we say, my master and me. Amen to that, brother. Amen. Then you can be on your way to hear your good. Something don't smell right here. You, what's your name? Harry, brother, they call scent. me. Scent, you're wearing scent. Brother, a word in your ear. Oh! Hold the horse! Oh, no, the damn help horse, hold it! No help for you, brother! What have you done? I cut his throat. You killed him, Michael. Yes, sir. That's what happens in wars. Now get the horse into that copse over there. What will you do? Can't leave it to find its way home, can we? Can we're not. They're not some way, Michael. The man was a rebel, but the horse... We can't take the chance. No. No, we hide the saddle, the harness. Let it go. I, I will not, I cannot. We must. You do not say that to your king. Then on your head be it, sir. The animals are dry and... How much forage have we left? Three days, perhaps. Uh, we'll be in London by then. Yeah. It's soggy, but it's food. Oh. I'm thinking of going north. What if we're arrested before we reach the city, or Westminster, or the people? Sir, isn't that what it's all about? Once the people see their king in his rightful place, they'll flock to you, and Parliament will have to deal. If... 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 What if they take me and put me in the tower? Will the people even know I'm in London? What if... When it comes to it, the people don't want to know. There are too, too many possibilities. Too much can go wrong. You or your father have always been here. People might as well live without the dawn or sunset. You're the pattern of our lives. Use that. Be that. When I think on it, Michael, my mind is full of phantoms of failure. Then don't think, for God's sake, man. Just do your bloody job. Aye. Aye, for God's sake. He will go with me. And this is, this is my decision. I go north. Will you go with me, Michael?
God help us, we're lost. No, sir. We go north as you wanted. God's way, from steeple to steeple. How long before we reach Newcastle? That I can't tell. A week, perhaps more, perhaps less. But why, sir? Why Newcastle? They told me they will secure me in safety and honour and ask me to do nothing against my conscience. Who, sir? The Scots, they have told me so. Montrose and his loyalists are over the border. Not in Newcastle. That's held by... You can't! Then tell the king what he can and cannot do, Michael. They're covenanters! They started this whole bloody thing by throwing out your prayer book. They've been fighting with the rebels. They are the rebels! Oh, if I give them a Protestant state within the Union, they will come out for the crown. And if Parliament won't restore me, they will. But there's a treaty, signed and sealed. Nothing on paper, but their man has given his word. A Scotsman's word to an Englishman. Even an English king is no more than spit in the wind. Have no armies. Are you a magician as well as a priest and ranger? Can you magic me men out of the storm, Michael? Raise me regiments out of mud and stones? You said you would risk all to save all. You alone would stand before them and talk. The king has thought better. Thought worse. Far worse. I am a Stuart. Scottish king, not an English one. Come on. When things are at their worst and all hope seems lost, where do you go? Back to the hill country. Back to your own people. Your own half fire. Welcome, Your Majesty. It is good to be warm again, General. And to hear a true Scots voice. <laughs> There is much to be done. Indeed there is, sire. Matters are coming to a head, and men must decide where their loyalty lies. Indeed. And their advantage. That is why we strike fast, whilst the iron is hot, General. Be so good as to assemble my commanders. Bring maps, charts. I'm eager to be at them. There are some things that must be settled first. We have talked, agreed. We are of one mind. You are... Your garrison there still holds out, if... You could just sign here, order them to open the gates, since we are allies now. Yes, of course. And to Montrose in Scotland, directing him to put his forces under the command of the Covenanters. Watson! Sir? Here. There is not a moment to be lost. Aye, had we but whirled enough in time. But do you know the line, Majesty? No, I do not. Written by a young fellow who works for Fairfax. Had we but whirled enough in time. But I fear you do not, sire. What? What do you say, General? Your word was given. I was promised, assured. What reason can you have? The same old reason. Thirty pieces of silver. Enough to buy you a rope and a grave in Potter's Field. Four hundred thousand pieces of silver, actually, sir. And never mind Potter's Field. This'll buy us the whole bloody country. Please, make yourself comfortable, Your Majesty. World enough and time. Time to live and... Time to hope. If it had been you, alone in that lane with a knife. I would have been taken prisoner by the trooper long before I ever got to Newcastle. But in the end, was there any difference? Was I blown by the winds of circumstance? Then go back further, to a time of hope, when your choices might still have meant something made a difference. Maria. Always Maria. In Oxford. Coming back to me from her exile abroad. So we could stand together against the rebellion.
Your Majesty, I bring you soldiers and cannon, ammunition and money from the north. Madam, you are my greatest and best generalissima. But most of all, with you here now, my heart is whole again. And our cause, both just and holy, is assured of success. Would it, do you think, be permissible for the commander-in-chief to kiss his generalissima? I've wanted nothing more since we parted at Dover. Then let journeys end in lovers' meeting. It's just as it was, my love. I wish that were true. But we can make it so now you are here. I uh, brought Rupert. Good. We can use him. But carefully, and only so far. He can do anything he is ordered, but do not let him I have his head. I think I know my generals, Maria. We are united in our aims here. But tonight I don't want to think about the rebellion. Only of you. Shall we dance? Do you remember the last time? After Strafford. I told you to smile, and you said you could not. I thought I would never smile again that day. And now I cannot stop. <sighs> Maria, I love you very much. And I you, my Charles. And I know that together there is nothing we cannot achieve. Don't think you're too old for an arse tanning, Rupert. Attack, attack, attack. What else is there to do in God's name? In the King's name, we must talk. Old men talk, young men fight. Look, if you can still see that far, here, here, here. Weak points in their lines. Their supply train breaks down at this crossing here. If we talk now, we talk from a position of strength. If we strike now, mm. we strike from a position of strength. And the defeated rebels will concede far more. People don't think about grand strategy. They only know that the Royal Cavalry is burning their houses down today. They see the smoke rising and they're afraid. And their voice will make Parliament talk. Talk to London, or talk to this man Cromwell in the Eastern Association, or talk to Fairfax or Pym or Essex, but talk to someone. And save time and lives and save our cause. Uh, my father always said causes are for winning. And mind that it always comes down to talking. Look, my lord, what if we advance on London now? All the King's forces, everything we have brought from the North. We have arms, ammunition, supplies. The time will never be better for one great push. Risk all to gain all. And yes, you go ahead of us, Hyde. Talk to Parliament. Tell them exactly what's coming. Frighten the britches off them. And if they want to talk, then we'll see. If there's no other policy, then I'll go with that. John Pym's a sick man, they tell me. Let's make him a deal sicker, shall we? Very well. I have decided. There's a rebel garrison holding Gloucester. We shall send a force to take the town by siege and hold sufficient reserves here in Oxford. Oh, for the love of God, Majesty! My apologies. I... But London is to the east where the sun rises, not in the west where it sets. We will show the rebels our force, take Gloucester. Teach them a lesson without risking too much, and then... Then, sir, if I may... Hide. There are two positions here. We talk, or we attack London. Or possibly a combination of both. What you propose is the negation of all. The worst possible, if I may be permitted to say, choice. You're right there for once. You must listen to them, my dear. Must. Please, listen. I am the Commander-in-Chief. I am the decider. I have listened. I believe that attacking London with all our force is too great a risk. If we lose, we lose everything. Even offering to talk from behind our armies leaves Oxford and the West undefended. Whereas if we keep a garrison here, we can respond quickly and effectively to any problems. At the same time, we show the rebels our power by taking Gloucester. If mm. we take Gloucester. That is my decision. Ah! 
Hey! Careful, Sire! Any good shot that you sometimes get lucky. Thank you, Sergeant. Where is Prince Rupert? In the culvert, sir. That way. Thank you. Uh, sire, begging your pardon. Yes. It's been eight months, sir. Are we ever going home again? It's in God's hands, Sergeant. Aye, sir. Uh, God save the king, sir. The Scots have crossed the border. Covenanters. Uh, my people tell me they're heading for Newcastle, and I have to tell you, Uncle, that city will not hold out as long as these bastards have. Is there no chance? There never was. I don't like to say it, sir, but you were wrong. I need to go north now. If the Scots join up with the rebels, they'll sweep down through the Midlands and we'll lose the whole northwest. The forces we have left in Oxford won't stand a chance. There's something else. There always is once things start going to shit. I don't like your language, Rupert. I apologise, sir. I don't like the way the war's going. Parliament has charged the Queen with high treason for levying war against the nation. If she is taken, she will be tried and executed. I cannot allow that to happen. Well, she must leave the country at once. I'm going to abandon the siege. Pull back to Oxford, where we still have a friendly population. The Queen will go by Abington to the coast. Sick, Rupert. Slave, they say. She may not live. I, I could not stand that, I think. She's strong. She'll live for you, sir. But we must move, and move fast, if we are to save anything. Summer is coming. And your generalissima is deserting the colours. Never. Ever. You will come back again. I swear it. And your cavalier will once more kneel before you and offer you his love and devotion. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'll go. Oh, I can't bear this. Oh, please go. And God be with you always. There's no time to waste. The rebels advance on Oxford. We must go now. Rupert, I will never see her again. Oh, God. I feel it as if a sword were already piercing my heart. There's no time for hearts. Only for action. We must go. We must. <sighs> Is there a path we follow through this life? Are we free to make our own way? How, how can there be so much time and so little? Find the beginning then. Nottingham, where you raised your standard against rebellion. Were you sure and certain then? Was there ever a time you were? Because there was never a time when Pym and Cromwell weren't. It's a fine sight, Uncle. An army on the march. Somehow, my boy, I never cared for it. Never wished it for sure. You've done all a man could and more, sire. London has become impossible with the militias roving the streets. Half of them not even knowing the course which they fight. Apprentice boys and petty thieves, pimps and paupers. But all of them, Hyde, seeing the world pass by their gate and each and every one ready to take a hand in it. If John Pym and his friends have done nothing else, they have given history to the people for the first time. As to what they will do with it, God only knows. Turn this world upside down. They have no business with the world. Each in his place. The king at his table, the beggar at the gate. I'm no philosopher, uncle. Give me a horse and a force of brave men and we'll set the world back on its feet again. My father spent his whole reign bringing opposites together and doing all he could to keep them there. It seems to me that I have done the reverse. What's done is done, Majesty. Our task is to face the day before us. War, Hyde. The unimaginable. Country at war with itself. Lionel! 
Stop that! Come on! Right, right. Marcus! Right. 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 right! On the Marcus! Heads off! Heads off! God save the king! God save the king! The king. Today, I plant this banner, this royal banner in this soil of England, this nation I love and have served always to the best of my ability. Over the centuries, this England has stood firm against her enemies without and within. Now we face our great Where's my standard? Sir? The royal standard, Sergeant. Where is it? Can't rightly say, sir. Must have blown down in the night. Took by the storm, most like. I can send a patrol out, see if they can find it, sir, but in all this... It, it's all it right, be Sergeant. Easy. We've got better things to do with our time, I think. Very good, sir. Is that all, sir? That's all, Sergeant. I begin to see it now. Yes, sir. We come to it at the end. Or the beginning. It was always you, Strafford. The best man I ever had. The most able. I could have saved you. If I had saved you. Maria knew it. Parliament knew it. God help me, I knew it. Yes, there, in the House of Lords on the first day of your trial. Oh, not there to be seen, not honestly there, but hidden away, a corner king. I promised it would be nothing, an inconvenience. I swore. I swore. Thomas Wentworth, Earl of Strafford. You are accused of high treason, of the theft of government assets, of fostering the Catholic religion, of plotting to make war against this parliament with Catholic forces, of encouraging dissent against the of Scots, subverting the sacred rights of this parliament in the name of your master. How do you plead? I plead not guilty, Mr. Pym. <laughs> The court already has my written rebuttal to each and every one of these charges. I am surprised that it has decided to waste so much time pursuing this matter. Time that could be better spent in the service of this nation, if that is what the court desires. It is not for you to decide what this court desires, sir. The jury will decide. Since the court is packed with your placemen, I imagine they have decided the matter already. To your satisfaction. This from the man who plotted to bring Irish Catholic troops across the sea to wage war no. against his own oh, country. Jesus! 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 On the contrary, sir, I move to obey the orders of my king. And of this house. There was no war against the people planned by me. As for you and your fellows, Mr. Pym, I really cannot say. Well, I say treason! And I will say it too, Goodman John, but who's treason? Huh? This Parliament passed a bill declaring war upon the Covenanters of Scotland, then refused to grant His Majesty funds to fight it. What could the King do but find alternative means to pursue a conflict that was in every aspect legal? This is treason shouted loud! He admits his crimes before this house! Oh, yes! Oh, yes, I admit there was treason from those who made secret alliances with the Scottish Puritan tendency was pretending... Stand down, I say. Pretending. Stand down, sir, this house will not down! I saw them, Maria. It was terrible. I think they would have torn him down there and then. But they did not. They dared not, my love. There is still respect for the king and the law in this country. And he had the better of them. Throughout the day, John 
him, threw the charges at him, and he batted them away as if he were playing cat. All the home runs were his. That's been the case little enough lately, Charles. We are always, it seems to me, walking backwards whilst Parliament walks forward. Things will change. Not unless we make them. What are you saying? I have been talking to certain men of the opposition who fear the darkness Pym and his supporters are bringing over this country. They see a hopeless, heartless fundamentalism that allows no dissent, no opposition, loyal or otherwise. Does Pym know of this? He may know, but he's not strong enough to do anything about it yet. But this is why they threatened you. This is why Strafford is standing trial, because they could not no. touch the Queen. I gave them Strafford. I signed the papers. All the time, you are talking to the enemy. They are not the enemy, but if they become so, we are lost. We must make friends of those we can, whilst we can. If you will do nothing, Charles, someone must. And Strafford? He's a brilliant man. He'll throw down their paper walls and walk free. We'll come through this stronger, and the people will see that the truth stands with us and not with Parliament. And if Strafford doesn't succeed, if these walls are stone and bound with bands of iron... Then you will save him, as you promised. Over the weary days and weeks we have attended here, I have one by one struck down the charges against me. Where the prosecution has offered witnesses, I have offered witnesses of my own. Where documents have been submitted, I too have submitted documents that have proved to be the correct account of events. The Earl is plausible. But the prosecution has not finished with him. There are more witnesses to call. Honest men who have come forward to stand shoulder to shoulder in this contest of truth and lies. If you have more, Goodman John, bring them on. But let me give you some advice. You and your brothers hate the theatre and wish to close it down. Well, start here and now with this clumsy comedy composed by inept hands performed by under-rehearsed actors. Because if you do not, it will run and run. And with every sad performance, you will look the worst. Smile, my love. How can I? We are observed. Every eye in the room is on the king and queen. But for all mercy, Maria, he threw down those walls. He made them look like fools. He proved his innocence. You're never going to thank him for that? No, of course not. But I did not believe they would simply go to Parliament and cobble together a bill to sentence him to death. Where is law? Where is their god in all of this? It's not done yet. Whilst there is a king, the bill needs his signature before it becomes law. Strafford is safe. I will die before I allow the axe to touch his neck. Then smile and laugh and bow to all and we'll lay our plans. All stand for his majesty! You know, all of you, that I must have a part in this matter, for you will need my hand to any design of yours before it becomes law. I say, therefore, that we must together find a way forward that will satisfy justice and the wishes of King and Parliament. You must know, I will not go against my conscience in this matter. Now, I may allow that the Earl Strafford has been guilty of misdemeanor, of, of small crimes and even larcenies, but of treason, no. No, I say no. There I will not go, but will ask again in a spirit of conciliation. Let us go forward together and find a better way. His Majesty says a better way. An honest way, perhaps. 
a way of truth. And yet, even as we sit here, does not the Queen hold backstairs talks with members of these two houses offering gold, position, honours and power for betrayal? This man, Pym, says I may not leave the country. This man, Pym, says our children may not leave the country. What right does this man have? Is Pym the king? The right of the mob. He commands the, the discontent of London. Then it is here and now. What? Is this where we stand and say, here and no further? The king can't do that. Why not? It will be cutting off my own head. I am the state. How can I fight myself? Once I admit that possibility, everything falls apart. And so what? You're going to let them cut off Strafford's head? I swore I would not. And in a few minutes they will come and ask you to sign the Bill of Attainder and it will be so. If you had not My father was a man who did not know the meaning of fear. He gave up his religion for the throne of France. When he said a thing, it was the thing. And no one, but no one said otherwise. John Pym knows exactly what he wants and exactly how he's going to get it, and exactly what he or the rest of us will pay for it. Me, every time I see a city on a hill and start walking towards it, I find a hundred thousand different paths to take. I cannot decide. Are they the people you will not wage war against? Is that what you're worried about, Charles? Is that your England? Listen to them! Listen! Stand now here. Have the courage to be the king that Almighty God put on the throne. Majesty. Please do not stand. The last time I saw you, we smiled at each other across the courtroom because we thought we'd won. I... I... Strafford, I... Ah. Who trusts the word of princes? I, I did not want to. I did not. I never wanted. Enough. I did not. Enough, sir. The king can't cry. They told me. All of them. The privy council. You have to. You, you must. The country will fall apart. Everything will be lost if you do not. And I said, I cannot. And they said, you can. And I said, my conscience. And they said, no, the church is there to grease your conscience to hell. <laughs> John Pym would never have said that if they held his babies above a vat of boiling oil he would not I could not I, I say you should have hanged him when you had the chance I am ashamed perhaps they're right these Calvinists and we have no choice no part in the direction of our own lives it's merely a Process. I don't believe that. My sin today is my own, and I will pay for it. I pray England does not pay as well. Majesty, I do not have long my family. I would wish to see them and to clear my conscience. Can you? Strafford, can, can you forgive me? I can forgive your majesty, but that is never the question. I have done my duty, and now I'm done with it as it is done with me. Goodbye, sir. A better master could not have had a better servant. You knew, sir, that when you signed the bill for me, you signed your own death warrant. Yes. 
I understand now. The crime that has brought me rightly here was betrayal. For that, I condemn myself. Then we are done here, are we not? Yes. Only time enough to stretch out my arms. And time to die. In This War Without an Enemy, by Mike Walker, Charles was played by Julian Rhind Tutt, Strafford by Anton Lesser, Pym Vincent Franklin, and Maria by Vanessa Kirby. Oliver Cromwell was Ben Crow, Thomas Matthew Watson, and the Colonel was Michael Burtonshaw. Prince Rupert was played by Ian Batchelor, Hudson Sean Murray, General Leven by David Seddon, and The Trooper by Paul Stonehouse. The directors were Jessica Dromgoul and Sasha Yevtushenko. <laughs>